Okay, let's do one more problem together. So what we have here is a pendulum, and it consists of a slender rod with a mass of two kilograms and a circular plate with a mass of four kilograms. And it says the pendulum's radius of gyration is what we want to find about an axis perpendicular to the screen and passing through point O. Okay, so I've got some axis right here and it's coming out of the screen. Well, how do we do that? We're simply going to follow the steps that are similar to finding our moment of inertia for a composite area. I just think we did it in statics. Um, and then we can simply figure out what is the parallel axis theorem to help us figure out what the um, correction terms are for each of these shapes. So let's try it out. First off, we're going to have this mallet head and the rod, which we'll call R and P. Now the center of mass for the rod is at point GR, which is going to be its centroid, um, which is one meter from point O. Center of mass for the circular plate is going to be right here, and that's two and a half meters from point O, which is because there's two meters plus this half meter. Now the mass moment of inertia for a slender rod and a circular plate, they're given inside the back cover of your textbook. So if you're wondering where these equations come from, that's where it is. So let's look at it right here. What we have is for the rod, it's one twelfth times the length, um, sorry, not times the length, times um, the mass times the length squared. For the circle, it's one half times the mass times the radius squared. And then we have the parallel axis theorem, which says, I have to add that term because this is not spinning around my axis. And so you do the mass times the distance squared. So for the rod, it's mass of two times a distance of one squared. For this circle, it's a mass of four times a distance of two and a half squared. So I add all those together and I get that my overall mass of inertia is 28.17 kilogram meters squared. And that's it. You're done. So we looked up some equations in the back of the book. Thank goodness for tables. And then we did our parallel axis theorem right here. So it's a fairly simple process that doesn't look very simple. So check it out, try it out, and I hope this helps you. Thank you for listening. Oh, I forgot one thing. I gotta get the mass moment of inertia. And the rate of gyration, I just plug all this in and I have the answer, which is 2.17 meters. There you go, okay. Um, this is just the last little thing I have to do, which is so we find this, and that's simply equal to the square root of our mass of inertia over the mass. Okay, with that, we've done everything. Thank you for listening. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.